Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. The past several days have seen a number of mass shootings occurring across the United States, the point where Donald Trump himself just recently said that perhaps something more needs to be done to stem this tide of violence. And those words, perhaps something more needs to be done, has gotten a lot of conservatives concerned about the idea of whether or not Donald Trump might be coming around to the idea of gun control legislation. As I see him, Donald Trump is a bit of a political chameleon. He'll change his point of view depending on where the political wind is blowing and where it might serve him uh, best politically. I know that that's offensive to some people, but that's the way that I see him and that I found, you know, watching him through his, for his presidency here, uh, it has been the most predictive way of, you know, seeing where he's going to be going on things is, you know, what is going to be the most politically advantageous. And he does seem like he changes his perspective based on what is the most, you know, effective way of taking a stance on an issue. Uh, so I would suggest that that is a possibility, that he might be considering gun control legislation. Are you someone that supports the idea of being able to keep firearms for the protection of yourself and, and the protection of your family? If you are, you're like me. These two safes back here, these large, they're out of focus, but two large black safes, those are full of firearms. I'm someone that keeps firearms. I believe in the, uh, the right of people to uh, to keep and hold firearms. It's in our constitution. No, it's not in the constitution. It's in our bill of rights for a reason. Uh, I think that that's an important reason. I think it is oftentimes overblown by people. I think it is oftentimes overly fixated. It is certainly overly fixated up upon by people. But I think it's an important right for people to have. Thomas Jefferson said that if you have a government afraid of its people, then you have freedom and liberty. And if you have a gov uh, people who are afraid of, afraid of their government, which is kind of the way that it's feeling right now, you have tyranny. And I think that that is a, an important right to keep and to preserve. I also think that uh, some type of weapon control is a good thing. I don't think that people who are clearly mentally deranged should have access to nuclear weapons, say. If nuclear weapons were, became, you know, you could buy them at like every corner drugstore and, you know, mentally deranged people could, you know, could purchase those, I think that that would be a problem and I think most people would agree with that. I think that there is a line there somewhere. Uh, and the, the debate is where exactly is that line? Are they, you know, should the mentally deranged person be allowed to have a nuclear weapon or, you know, should nobody be allowed to have any weapons except for the government? I think most people would agree that the line's somewhere in the middle there. I, I would agree with that. So on this particular issue of is Donald Trump changing his tune? Are, are we gonna see some gun control legislation coming through that he might be supporting that might curtail some of our rights? Is that something that concerns you? And if it does, you're kind of like me in that way, but also I don't think that we should be fixating upon that. I think that so frequently people criticize other people's attempt to solve a problem while really doing nothing to try to solve it on their own. And I know that this is a large problem. It's not something that you or I or any one of us can solve completely on our own. But I think that you and I and everyone else, well, not everyone else, but most people, including Donald Trump, contribute to this problem in so many ways in our lives. I, one of my favorite channels is Bo of the Fifth Column. And he has a great uh, little bit that he's talked about, about uh, you know, the responsibility of firearms owners and how you oftentimes see people you know, posing with their rifles and shots and things like that. And you know, they talk about, oh, you know, people are offended by this you know, but I have a right to hold this, this rifle and, you know, and a rifle is just a tool like any other. Uh, but Bo the Fifth Column comments that you never see people standing around with their screwdriver or their hammer, you know, posing with their hammer. And clearly there's a difference. You know, when someone stands there with a firearm, they are trying to convey something. And that, I mean, you and I know what it is. It's manliness, it's strength. Those are appealing things, you know, to people who want to be manly or people who want to be strong. Those are appealing things to people. And when you're putting that messaging out there, and so many people do it, you are contributing to this problem when you associate the idea of firearms with strength, firearms with control. You are contributing to that problem in a, you know, maybe a microscopic way, but you're a part of the problem and not a part of the solution. In the same way, people who are not open to open dialogue, the idea that, you know, it's my way or the highway, if you don't agree with me, then, you know, you're crazy, you're a libtard, you're like a crazy fascist, you know, whatever, you know, uh, people who view the world through that lens are contributing to the problem because that kind of mindset of like, you're either with me or you're against me, and if you're against me, why shouldn't I just shoot you up? 
that contributes to the problem as well. So we all, many of us, contribute to that sort of zeitgeist in our culture where you know, to have weapons makes you strong, gives you control over your life. People who don't feel strong, people who don't feel like they have control over their lives, they see those messages, those, they hear those messages, and it has an impact. And we all know that with scientific studies, the, the, the culture that you're living in has an impact upon you. When people, especially kids, you know, get hit up with the idea of like, it's, you know, you're either with me or against me. Like, I disagree with this person. This person is an idiot because I disagree with them. Those are all ways that we are helping to contribute to create a society of people that are ready to fight with each other with weapons. You know, people talk about video games being a part of the problem. And you know, I don't really know. There are plenty of people that play video games and they don't turn into, you know, psychotic killers. And, you know, maybe there are some who do. But from my perspective, the, these messages that we're all putting out there are contributing to this culture of violence, this culture of solving problems with weapons instead of with words. And instead of trying to shoot other people down, pun intended, well, not, not in like a funny way, but I mean, you know what I'm talking about. We have those kind of words in our in our rhetoric, you know, shooting people down because it's, it, you know, it's, it refers to the violence that is inherent in the idea of disregarding somebody and shooting them down. If you are contributing to that, you're contributing to this problem, you're contributing to this environment in which we're all living. And it's great. No, it's not great. It's great if you want to just shoot other people down for their potential solutions to the problem by controlling guns. I think that that's a, I think it's a loser solution there. We can get rid of the guns and people will come up with something else. I mean, well, just looking around me now, I got, okay. I've got matches. I've got flammable paints. I mean, you don't need a gun to kill lots of people. I'm not going to describe exactly how I, someone could kill a bunch of people with, you know, pr flammable chemicals, matches, and whatever. But I mean, the point is, is that you take away one weapon, if people have the mindset that they're right, everyone else is wrong, and they need to use violence to demonstrate that, they're going to find a way. So people can waste their time on gun control legislation. Again, I'm not I don't think that it's crazy. I think that some gun control is sensible. I don't want people who are clearly mentally deranged having extremely dangerous weapons. I think that there is a role for that. But to get all fixated on that one way of solving the problem is folly. It's not going to work. And to get all fixated on trying to stop people from that one solution is also folly because why criticize others who are trying to solve the problem when you and I and everyone else has the potential to actually start solving it in a real way ourselves by changing the way that we raise our kids, by changing the way that we talk to others, especially the people that we disagree with, especially to the people that we hate, that we dislike, changing the way that we talk to them, changing the way that we interact with them, it can change the world. And that's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.